Hello, boyos. Rich Boy J here back in with another video, and this is going to be another episode of Your Questions Answered. If you're not familiar with the series, Your Questions Answered is a Q&A series that I do here on this channel. So if you want to see one of your questions answered in the video, put it in the comment section below. Make sure it is Lego Star Wars or Lego Star Wars related, and then check back next week to see if you made the cut. First question is going to come from Gray Man 5 He says, what Lego Star Wars set has the best minifigure group, not including a set with lots of minifigures like the Death Star, just regular sets? When you this, the first thing that came to my mind honestly would have been like the most recent Master Builder series Cloud City set or even the uh, old Ewok Village set but if we're excluding those for me it's two sets actually that are probably up there the first one is the old Jedi Defender class uh, shuttle that thing has some incredible minifigs I was actually talking about this on my most recent minifigure wall update video but like all the video, all the figs in that set are just superb. So I definitely got to say that one's up there. Another one that I kind of feel doesn't get enough credit is uh, the most recent Turbo Tank. The Quinlan Voss and the uh, Luminar that comes in that set are just both very beautiful figures. And of course it comes with some clones and droids as well. And those are nice and dandy. But like those two figures, I feel really elevate the minifigure group in those sets. Another one that I'll throw out there is a 2013 Mos Eisley Cantina set. I feel like that one for its time just had such a great um, group of minifigs. For one, it was the first and only set with Bith Musicians, and you even got three of them in the set, which is pretty incredible. You got an updated Greedo. I think at the time it was probably an updated Han Solo. They included the handsome Squidward Luke in that set, which is not very desirable. But um, everything else about that Luke figure was pretty incredible. Uh, the Sand Trooper at the time was also a new figure, and it had the big dewback in it. So um, I think that was just a really good grouping of minifigs as well. But I would love to know in the comment section below, what are some of you guys' sets that, uh, not like UCS sets, but just kind of standard sets that you feel have the best grouping of minifigures? I would love to know that. But that was a great question, man. Thanks for asking. Next question comes from Solo Mahal. He says, could you make a video showcasing all your custom mock Star Wars ships keep up the amazing work. Thank you very much for starters. And this is actually a video idea I've been really wanting to do. The only thing that has been stopping me from doing it is the fact that my ATM-6 is still pretty much in shambles right now. And um, it's not an easy fix. I'm actually going to have to crack it open and um, realign some of like the structural parts on the inside uh, to get the neck to actually be where it's supposed to be. And um, I've just been so busy with other mocks and like trying to run this channel that I just haven't gotten around to it. So I'm thinking maybe that might be a good like holiday season type of video to do where I just show you guys like all of my vehicle mocks that I've done because for the most, I mean, I have all of them. Like I have this, I have my ATAT -AT Walker, which I use in Vardos, obviously. I got my Corvus sitting right there. Got my Millennium Falcon. You can kind of see it. It's over there behind all that junk. And um, some of the smaller vehicles, like I have my Ty Reaper right there behind me. I have, um, actually, I guess I have my resistance shuttle. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, it's right there. Resistance shuttle, chilling right there. Um, I have the first order shuttle. It's actually, um, kind of still broken over there and that's fair because it was never like a full ship to begin with so I would also like to build that in its entirety uh, if I did that type of video but yeah that's something that I would totally love to do i um, got my first order transporter as well sitting on Starkiller base so I got plenty of like vehicles to do a, a video like that on it's just a matter of Fixing that ATM-6, everything else seems to be in decent shape for the most part, but that ATM-6 is going to take some work, and um, I don't know, I just, ever since I took it to that last uh, convention, I just haven't really been wanting to touch it, which is totally fair, it is a big, um, monstrous build, but I promise I will get to that at some point at the same time that I get around to the room tour, probably. Next question comes from Lego Guy 11112 Six six. He says, which one is worse, Lego making Star Wars SDCC minifigs or 501st Battle Pack with Ahsoka helmets? So, um, I guess the question is, like, what would be worse, like, if we finally get a 501st Battle Pack but it has the Ahsoka helmets, or if Star uh, Lego started putting out, like, uh, exclusive Comic-Con Star Wars figures that we could only get in those dumb, expensive um, sets? <sighs> Um, I'm honestly, I'm going to say with the SDCC minifigs, like at least with the 501st Battle Pack and Ahsoka's Helmet, there is still the possibility that down the line we will get just standard updated 501st troops in some sort of battle pack. With the SDC figs, like that's pretty much it. Like you should never expect to see those literally anywhere else except from like uh, SDCC, which would really suck for Star Wars. 
I'm honestly shocked but pleasantly surprised that up to this point, Lego has showed enough restraint to not do that to us as Star Wars fans, to not make exclusive figures that are only available to the people that go to Comic-Con. That actually, I really appreciate that because that could really mess things up for a lot of people. Um, any figs that come in those sets are figs that we've gotten in other sets. So that's really nice. But yeah, I, I really don't ever want to see that at that point. Like, that's that's going to make me very upset. Next question comes from Dude Brick. He says, what is your dream Lego Star Wars minifigure polybag? I think similar to the way that they did the Darth Revan for, um, the, I think, the, what, the second May the Force figure. I would want to see Darth Nihilus. I think Darth Nihilus has a really cool looking character design. Um, Knights of the Old Republic is my favorite game, and KOTOR 2 is definitely up there as well in terms of my favorite games. And I would really just love to have a minifig of Darth Nihilus. Um, I think it's just, it's just a really cool looking Sith, you know? And I don't expect to ever get like a set from KOTOR 2. It's really kind of far out there now, especially if Disney's gonna be doing new Knights of the Old Republic time era films. I think that really just um, pushes any hopes of us getting KOTOR or KOTOR 2 sets out of the window. But um, if they just did a poly bag similar to how they did with Revan, with um, Darth Nihilus, I would actually really appreciate that. Next question comes from Hunter Wardle. He says, hey Jay, I love your channel. What tips and tricks do you uh, use when ordering parts on BrickLink? Also, what's your favorite lightsaber color? I'll answer the second part first. Favorite lightsaber color is green. Just the look of Luke from Return of the Jedi with the green lightsaber, the black clothes. That is my favorite version of Luke and um, that green lightsaber, man. I love it, love it so much. As for tips and tricks on BrickLink, um, the, I think the biggest thing that I do that is useful on BrickLink is always making a wanted list. When I first started using BrickLink, basically what I would do is I would look, like just, I would look, literally just look up any random part I needed and I'd find a big store that had like that part and then I would just go through their inventory and just try to fill in the gaps of other parts that I needed from that one store and then just keep doing that until I ordered everything I needed. Needless to say, I ended up placing a lot of orders from different people, which will very drastically drive up the shipping price. So um, BrickLink has what they call Easy Buy, and that is your best friend. You can use Easy Buy with a wanted list, which is basically where you just compile a list of parts you need, you import it into BrickLink, and then they do all the math, they do all the difficult work in figuring out the optimal solution and minimizing the amount of sellers as well as the prices. So you're um, not paying a ton for the parts, but also not paying a ton in shipping from multiple different people. So I think compiling a wanted list will be your best friend. What I actually do when I'm placing an order or like compiling um, something to place an order is LDD. Um, for one, I think it's a lot easier to navigate parts in LED. Um, I don't know, some people may not find that to be the case. They might rather just add the parts manually on BrickLink. I think like having the visual interface of LDD just makes it a lot easier. But I'll basically just put all the parts that I wanna order in an LDD file, and then I'll import the LDD file to BrickLink, and then I'll just buy it from there. Um, so if you have experience with LDD, and you really don't even need much experience other than I guess just knowing how to find the parts, but I imagine if you can find the parts on BrickLink, you should be able to find them on LDD. Uh, anyways, um, LDD can be really helpful with that and just really compiling a big group of parts really quickly and um, just importing them to BrickLink using Easy Buy, boom, everything works out. So um, are there any other tips and tricks that you guys use when ordering from BrickLink that I don't know about or that I didn't uh, previously mention? I would love to know um, what is your guys' kind of process in making BrickLink orders? Next question comes from Sticky Boyo. <laughs> like, what a name. Uh, he says, would you make mocks for your kids to play with when you have them? Oh, absolutely. Like, that's the dream, right? I think anyone who wants to have kids and is into Lego would want to share the experience of enjoying Lego with their children. So down the line, like, if my kid happened to be into Lego, I would love to build with them, build for them. Um, one of the cool things I thought... Um, about Brick Plumber is uh, I've talked to him pretty extensively kind of about his history with Lego and um, what kind of got him into it and kept him into it. And I think one of the biggest factors that um, kind of kept him into Lego as an adult was he told me um, building things for his son. Like that was something that they shared and he was always kind of building like setups and like vehicles for his son and him to enjoy together. And I think that is just the coolest thing ever. So if I can have some sort of bond like that with my potential child children who knows um i think that would be just a really incredible experience um yeah that'd be awesome 
The final question is going to come from Noah King 13. He says, what was your favorite subject back in sixth grade? I'm now in eighth grade. Also, how old are you? Um, this is not Lego or Star Wars or Lego like Star Wars related, but I'm going to make it Star Wars related because um, I kind of like the question. So um, I'm 24 years old, just to answer that. Uh, what's your favorite subject in sixth grade? So when I was in sixth grade, I took an animation class and I feel like that's probably one of the most influential classes I've ever taken because I've done so many things kind of surrounding that since then. And that was really one of the big draws to getting me to go to that specific middle school. Like whenever I went to, I guess their orientation, they were like, hey, like we're gonna be having an animation class that the sixth graders can take. And I was just blown away. I was like, oh my God, um, I can't wait to animate things. I've always been into animation. Um, so the program that I use for that, like to this day, I still use, like it's a really outdated program, but I actually use that program nowadays um, to make my thumbnails on my YouTube channel and any artwork that I need to make. Like I use that animation program, which is kind of funny to think about, but I mean, I just, I know the program so well, uh, it doesn't make sense for me not to use it. So that is, that's been really influential in that regard. But um, I just feel like I made so many things back in the day. Like, I made um, different types of Star Wars animations. I did, at one point, like, my, my main goal was to do, like, a 2D top-down version of GTA as, like, a Flash game. That was something I also really got into, making Flash games. And um, I was in way over my head with that project. But uh, at the time, it was kind of a cool thing to kind of figure out. And it taught me, I guess, my, my first knowledge of how coding works and stuff like that. And there's just so many things since then that I've done with animation. And there's also three videos here on this channel you can check out. Um, at the beginning of the class, we didn't have our official animation software yet. So we were actually using Microsoft PowerPoint to animate, which in hindsight is kind of funny to think about. But um, on this channel, if you look up, uh, what's, I think it's called like Stick Wars uh, Animation. If you, just go, if you just look up Rich Boy J Stick Wars um, Animation, it should come up. But basically, I tried to like recreate Star Wars in PowerPoint using stick figures. And it's funny to go back and look at because you could tell like I clearly didn't know a ton about Star Wars because the story is all messed up. But um, it's kind of a cool thing to just look at like even back then how I was so passionate about Star Wars that I was doing projects like that. So that's going to finish up the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed checking out your questions answered. If you want to see one of your questions answered in the video, leave it in the comment section below. Make sure that it's Lego, Star Wars, or Star Wars related, and then check back next week to see if you made the cut. Also, if you like what I do, go ahead and support the video by hitting the like button, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button. I'll be back again very soon.